Mary Beth here at the Mary Beth pulled up with the same time we did.
call the qualified. He qualifies those he called because I do not feel qualified to stand here and teach you <laughs> to make bread. I just started making it uh, several weeks ago myself. I actually, I made bread uh, prior to that, but making it the way more closer to how he intended it. Uh, just in the, this is, I'll be going into my seventh week of making bread, and here we are. <laughs> no, no accident, right? Um, I just want to give you a little idea of what to expect, so I'm going to share just a little bit of background for those who haven't seen the video, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the demonstration of making the bread so we can still uh, continue this talk and conversation while the bread is rising and baking and all of that to make the best use of our time. Thank you, Sarah, for she's like an organized girl who did me in line today. Um, so in Sue Becker's video, if you haven't seen it, uh, there were there, I always wonder, so just to give you background, years ago I lost my mom to breast cancer and I started reading books on food. I started eating whole food, started cutting out the junk. Re reading labels on food, trying to put more pure ingredients in our bodies. And then I ended up in a health and wellness business teaching people how to do this. And I was amazed how God created our bodies, that when I would teach people to eat whole foods, cut out gluten, I've been the girl for the last decade telling people don't eat gluten, it'll make you sick. <laughs> and here we are, he has a sense of humor, right? Um, so I would see that in 30 days, 60 days, people would have less inflammation, they would have less headaches, less body aches, less di uh, tummy disruption. And uh, so I was amazed at how God created our bodies to do what he intends them to do. And I believe that the enemy has tried to take our health and keep the body from being able to get out there and effectively do what he's called us to do by keeping us sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so for a decade, I've been doing that, but with, at the angle of, don't eat the gluten. And, uh, when I would eat it, I didn't have a severe allergy to it, but I would feel, not feel so bad. You know, I would tell people for the last 10 years, I've been telling them, if I eat these piece of toast, I want to take a nap, so I never want to start my day that way. You guys, when you eat a piece of bread the way we're intended to, it is nourishing. You are satisfied. I didn't have the bloating. I didn't have, I have I've been eating it since I started making it um, several weeks ago. I have not gained a single pound, but for all my life, if I ate bread, I would go up on the scale, and I knew I, so it's something so different, and I really think he's calling us to pay attention to this. As I started sharing around the table with Mary Beth, was like, what's new with you last week? And I started talking about the scriptures. It was like he was confirming, he was confirming, pay attention to this. There's something, there's so much more here. Um, but what first really spoke to me was in Deuteronomy, um, Deuteronomy 24, 6, if anyone has, if you have your Bible or pull that up. But it's about the, um, the stone mill. Okay, so in, in 1910, they started taking, uh, they took out the bran, the wheat germ, the 43 nutrients that were in the grain, the fiber, the fiber, which is a sponge for toxins when it goes through your body. They took all that out, just gave us the fluffy center of the grain. That's how we've known bread today. And we, we see that it, when we eat counterfeit bread, it makes us sick, right? A lot of, how many of you know somebody that has gluten allergies or have gluten allergies? I truly believe you don't have to live with gluten allergies. I've seen him reveal over the last five years spiritual roots to some of that, which is a topic for a, a different day. But part of my healing journey over the last five years has been in the area of, of spiritual roots. But when we get to, to eating the true bread, so, when they took all that out, so over 50 years, from 1910, the next 50 years, people were getting sick. They had an increase in birth defects, in um, diseases, and insanity, nervous disorders. Um, there were three different diseases that Sue Becker mentioned in her video. She's a food scientist by, by um, education. And um, when we get back to eating it the way we're intended, so this, okay, so the, the, the government went back to the people who were milling out, sifting out the, the commercial millers, I guess you could say, who were milling out the, the, good, the good stuff, and said, we have to put this back in. Too many people are getting sick. And what did they say? No, we can't. We're making too much money selling the wheat junk, selling the brand, 
So we will, they came to a compromise, it's my understanding, and they put four, there's over 43, 43 nutrients in whole grain. They put four key ones back in. Synthetic versions, not the real, the counterfeit. And that's how we know, right today. And so if you watch these videos, she shares beautifully how, you know, just over 30 years of teaching people to eat right the way it was intended, how they have less digestion troubles, less aches and pains. So for me personally, when I started within two weeks of eating this, I had a skin rash that had been there for a very long time on a clear up. It's the vitamin E. It's the new, most um, plentiful source of vitamin E is in whole grains. Vitamin E is also good for the muscle. There's a verse. Sarah, you have it. Uh, there's a verse that says, God gave man bread to strengthen his heart spiritually, and I believe he's showing us today physically also. Vitamin E strengthens muscles. It's in Psalms, and it says, And wine that makes glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. Okay. Bread which strengthens man's heart. Okay. Okay. Psalms 10415, I think. One of, was it 10415? 10415. We were looking it up on the drive out here. Um, so I called my sister, and I was so excited because my brother-in-law, uh, he's died twice, <laughs> and he's still walking a miracle, uh, but he needs, his heart muscle needs to be strengthened, and he loves bread, and I'm like, he needs to have the real true thing, not the counterfeit. And so, <clears throat> the verse is Deuteronomy, I'm going to go back, <clears throat> uh, Deuteronomy 24, 6 said, uh, well, let's just find it. I have it. You have it. Read it, please. No one shall take a hand mill or an upper millstone used to grind grain into bread as security for a death, or he would be taking a person's life in flesh. Mm. We were never supposed, I believe that scripture is witness that we were never supposed to stop milling our own grain. Because it, scripture says that you can't accept a, as an oath or a pledge of man's stone mill, millstone, or you would be taking a life. And when we eat counterfeit bread, it makes us sick. When we eat true bread, it gives us life. And I, so for all these years, when I was teaching people not to eat gluten, I thought, why would, why would Yeshua compare himself to bread if it was junk? Mm -hmm. The bread of life. Mm -hmm. Because if we follow his example, he is the way, the truth, the life. This is completely storable. Grain in this form, you can store it with all those vitamins and nutrients for decades or hundreds of years and even beyond. It's a highly storable food. Why did he call Joseph to store up seven years of grain for, during seven years of plenty for seven years of lack? It's a sustainable food. It's nourishing. When we follow the, our, you know, his example through belief and our Messiah, it is nourishing. It gives, he gives life. So, so much there we could get into um, with what he's showing in the, in the scriptures. But I want you guys to see today how simple it is to do this in your own home. So, I actually learned this story about what had happened to bread, to grains, five years ago. But the solution that was given to me was to buy supplements that were taken out. So I had a cabinet full for the last five years of selenium, magnesium, B vitamins, iron. So when I looked at the cost of a mill, I was like, what have I been spending over the last five years in those supplements? And he specifically told me you need these because they've been taken out of the grains. So we're either not getting it because we're eating the counterfeit bread, or we're steering clear of it as Sarah and I have telling everybody, don't eat the gluten, it'll make you sick, and we're not getting those nutrients. And so I was amazed at how the body, physical body responded very differently to the, the true brain. And it parallels with uh, the, the word refers to grain as seed, and there's some scriptures that Sue shared on that. And, the word is seed. And so when we 
I look at uh, my life as growing up as a, a girl being taught to have faith and believe. But as I, as I uh, found myself at 42, getting ready to turn 43 years, my body was physically sick. And I asked the father, I said, I, I eat better than anyone I know. I avoid the gluten. I eat the whole foods. My body was, my body was failing. It was failing rapidly. And he started telling me, there's more. There's more. There's more. And he started showing me how to, what the word says. He started giving me more instead of just the fluffy good stuff, which is, is very good. That the, the endosperm is very good. It what's in the flour, but we've been eating it without the rest. And I, I had been living my life believing, but not realizing why I have these, these, these patterns that I would keep falling back into. And I found myself in a pit. So when he introduced me to me. So that several of you prayed for me during that time. I'm so grateful for your prayers. But he started showing me there's more. You need the whole truth. He taught me how to walk out uh, my salvation in, in with repentance and breaking off generational things. And some of that healing came in layer after layer after layer. And he restored what the enemy had tried to take from my life. And I see that in the physical, what he's teaching us here. And there's so much more. He said that around the table Thursday when he when he gave a download of the Spirit. It's, this is so important, and there's so much more. So as you start eating whole grain bread, if you choose to do that, making your own, I encourage you to ask, what is the spiritual? What else have I been believing the lie of the enemy? Because that's my health was restored when I started exchanging those lies of the enemy with his truth and his word. And I know Jenny and Alec have worked for many years in ministry, helping people do just that. And this, this physical part that I'm super excited about. Okay, how about we, we make some bread so we can get it rising. And as I said, I do not feel qualified to show you how to make bread, but we're going to do it anyway because I'm going to trust and obey, right? <laughs> trust and obey. Okay. This is Jenny and Alex's beautiful uh, new grain mill. This is a Como, as I understand it, right? I have a mock mill. I started out with a harvest nutri mill. I went with stone because the scripture talks about stone mill. There's all different kinds of mills, and I do want to have a, a manual one. My daughter has the manual, and I made bread at her house, and I'm like, when you use the manual, you burn the calories before you eat the bread. <laughs> so there. <laughs> yes. I'm like, okay. So this is good. But I, I'm amazed. Like within two minutes, it's so simple. You can take. We're going to use hard white today. So when you choose your grains for bread making with anything with yeast that rises, um, you want to go with a hard wheat berry. So. Your bread, I started with the hard red and the hard white. They also have, you know, God's given us einkorn and spelt and all different varieties. But to keep it simple today, we're going to talk about the hard red and the hard white. We're actually going to make the bread with the hard white because most people, the hard red is a nuttier flavor. A, um, it's nuttier, maybe a little more dense than the hard white. Now, if you're wanting to make cookies and cakes and biscuits, then you want to go with the soft white. Do I need to stand? No, you're good. Okay, in a certain way. Uh, the soft. So if you think about it, in the South, they have they make a lot of pies and biscuits and things like that. that the soft white is grown in the South, where the hard, or, yeah, I'm sorry, the, the hard wheat berries are grown more in the North, East, and then you have more of the, the yeast bread. So this, when you when you add your grain to the the stone mill, my recipe calls for about four and a half to five cups of flour. So I'm going to start with three and a half cups of grain. So for every cup of gra grain, you get an extra half a cup of flour. So this is about so three and a half cups. So I'm going to pour this in here and show you guys how the, um, now I don't know with the mic when I turn this on. I may want to stand over there and Sarah have you come and pour this in. So I don't know if the, oh, you're going to, 
Okay, he's going to take care of that. I didn't want to. Uh, but we will go ahead and grind. And we did a little test earlier on their new mill. Um, that's the, the flower that you see in there already. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on. You always turn it on first. And then...
four minutes. It's still pretty, very quick to have. So Sarah's coming around to let anyone else to feel it, feel the consistency of the flour. So I, I want to mention that you can, you can eat the grains in a variety of ways. Um, you can make cream of wheat with, just with water. You can sprinkle them on salads. Um, there's all different ways. You can don't you don't have to make bread with the soft white. You can make cookies and things. And so one of, some of the testimonies that really stood out to me when Sue was sharing was the children eating the bread or the cookies even made with the fresh milk grain. She has testimony after testimony after testimony of their warts falling off of their bodies. Wow. The vitamins, the vitamin E, the nutrients. So that gives you a visual. If it's doing that for warts on the skin, what is it doing for every cell in the body? Okay, so I tried, I do have Sue Becker's book here if anyone wants to put your hands on it today. Uh, it has the story that we've talked about, it, some of the testimonies and the things that God shown, has shown her in this book, um, the Essential Home Ground Flower Book with over 100 recipes. And I did make her, her basic bread recipe. It was wonderful. Uh, we enjoyed it, but I wanted to try my my favorite recipe that we've always used that was passed out from generation to generation to generation through my daughter. Um, and it, it never has an amount of flour because it was passed down from grandma to grandma to grandma, from generation to generation. And so it just says add enough that add, add flour until, basically, until the dough's ready. And so I went back to that recipe, and that's what I'm going to use today, just because I, I'm just so comfortable with it. Um, but when, when you, I am using raw cane sugar, because sugar, um, refined sugar, has also been stripped of the nutrients. So we, for over a decade or more, probably 15 years, have not bought white sugar in our home. Um, but when a recipe for bread calls for that, you can use honey. I've, I've done both. I want to find a good supplier of local honey, so if anybody have recommendations, let me know. Uh, you can use milk in places of water. It can make it softer. Uh, I'm using water. I don't know if anybody has any dairy sensitivities, so we're just using water. There's many possibilities, but I'm going to start with um, a tablespoon of sugar. And some the yeast, I use a tablespoon and a half in this recipe. At home, I always like have all my different measuring spoons, so I don't cross-contaminate anything. I'm just going to wipe this off here if you want some more to measure. That'd be great, just a one or two more. A little, while she's getting that, a little fun fact about yeast. Uh, I've been buying it in bulk through Azure Standard, as well as my, my grains. They are co-op, faith-based co-op that comes through Springfield um, once a month. You can store it in the freezer. Thank you, Jenny. You can store it in the freezer, and you do not have to let it come to room temperature. You can use it straight out of the freezer, so I just take it right out of the freezer normally. And add um, one tablespoon and a half. And you can put it right back in the freezer. So if you want to have it in larger quantities, I always um, do this step first. I know some of you can teach me so much more about making bread because <laughs> you've done it. Um, you don't want to get the water too hot, but you want it to be like baby bath water. Is that right, Cassini? Lukewarm. This might be a little too hot. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Um, water here. 
they have the boiling water on demand here, which is super nice. That's a little too warm. Making the bread, we have we have not had any that we didn't eat. It's all been delicious. When I started out with the hard bread, uh, just making this recipe, it did seem heavier than what you would normally get, more dense. Uh, so I found in Sue, one of Sue Becker's recommendations is to add sunflower lecithin. I showed this to Sarah today. She's like, "What did you say? A brain booster?" Lots of times. Building block for brain cells. Building block for brain cells. So uh, this little ingredient actually helps make the bread lighter and fluffier. And for this recipe, I'm going to use a tablespoon. Can you repeat the name? It's sunflower lecithin. Spell it. L e c i t h i n. And this is the pure powder. So I was excited. I ordered it, um, trying to get you know a lighter, fluffier texture. The first time I used it. I put it right in with the, well, I've done it both ways, with the liquid and with the dry ingredients. Both ways, it had a little bit of grit. So it gave, I told my husband, I was like, honey, you get to eat this bread. It has a little bit of grain and grit. Uh, it was still wonderful, but you could get a little bit of grit. So I researched that I needed to dissolve it in water first. So I've been letting this sit. When I get to the next step of adding another cup of water, I'm going to top this off to a full cup, and I used my little emulsion, uh, emulsion frother to get it uh, dissolved. So it makes the bread lighter and fluffier. And we literally weighed them on the scale, and, uh, made with and without, and the bread is a little lighter. And that's one of Sue's recommendations. How much water did you really do? One cup. So I'm letting this do its thing. Um, so we talked about not having it. Uh, so this is the three and a half ish cups of grain to give me about uh, five cups of flour. When I go to add the flour, I'm just going to add it until. So with fresh milled uh, grains, the flour is it absorbs water a little bit slow, slower than traditional flour that we've known, the counterfeit flour. So uh, you want to let it, after you get it mixed and it starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl, you want to let it rest a little bit. And I found that then, because I would sometimes be adding too much flour, trying to get that right texture, and it let, by letting it um, rest for a few minutes before kneading it, I found that I don't get it over, I don't add too much flour, if that makes sense. I know uh, Alec and Jenny, while I'm waiting on this, they ordered their um, grains from Pleasant Hill. Is that right? So there's different options. Uh, I've had some people tell me that the Amish at North of Springfield have grain also. So there's just, there's variety of places you can get it. Um, some places do charge a lot of shipping because of the weight of the grain. Uh, so Azure, I think I when I ordered 100 pounds of grain, the shipping was only $13 when you show up and uh, get it on their drop date. So they'll let you know when they, the next drop for Azure, I think is March 1st, and then they'll be coming through Ozark. I think they have a drop in Ozark also, and it's great. Oh. These are non-GMO, they come These are organic, um, yes. And Sue explained in the video uh, that wheat, it has not been genetically modified. Um, now, some of it may be, that's why I went with organic 
for the sprays and things like that. Um, it's, I think it, and I thought that too for years that it had been genetically modified, where it, whereas it's just been stripped out of its, its nutritional value, uh, stripped away from it. Over the years, she's helped a lot of people that she's had testimonies of people who couldn't eat gluten without getting sick, who were able to eat the bread as she made it and not get sick. Each person will have to, you know, pray and seek on that if you do have a severe, you know, gluten intolerance. Let's see, because there are other, um, like einkorn is a, uh, so they have been hybridized, is my understanding. They, they've been, um, different varieties by mixing grain, which is different than genetically modified. Einkorn, as I understand it, is like a, an ancient grain that has not been hybridized. So it's never been touched. It's never been touched. So I have bought some einkorn, but I haven't had a chance to play with it yet in recipes and things. Okay, so the next ingredients that we're going to add is our oil. I use olive oil. My husband did research. Um, he ran across this, something on it that said Moroccan olive oil has more of the key um, polyphenols, I think is what I'm going to say. I could be saying that wrong. You have to look it up. But it was more um, beneficial. And so that's what I'm using today. Um, if anybody has any tips on yeah, an olive oil that they love. I would love to hear more about that. So I'm going to use three tablespoons. I already have it measured out. Thank you, Sarah. Of oil. And then um, we are going to use a third cup of sugar. Or you could use honey. And this is uh, raw sugar, which has nutrients. They have not been stripped out. And this will make two loaves. Or you can use, sometimes I do half of the recipe for rolls, which you'll get to try today. Or cinnamon rolls, monkey bread, things that my husband likes. I'm so happy that he um, is getting to eat these things because for so many years I've been like, you don't need to eat so much of that. It's, it's not good for you. Um, it's all about moderation. I don't think we should, you know, it's about balance, right? But when you're, what you're getting and starting with is so much more nutritious, it makes me happy to know that he's eating something so much better. So this is just a basic recipe that you can use for a lot of things. Um, all right, so we have the sugar, the oil. I'm going to top this off with water. I researched or read in this book, that's a great question. Uh, so in her basic recipe, she was using about the same amount of flour that my recipe uses, and she had one tablespoon. So that's what we're doing today. Sorry, I should have had this pre-measure. Start. I'm going to mix these together because this has been uh, soaking, so we can avoid the grit. I use this just because I already have this at home, and I found that it helped me get it. Well, I'm just making up the difference in the water to one cup is what I want right now. So I need to add just a little bit more water. So the whole recipe is two cups of water. Yes. And I 
I should have asked you guys if you wanted to try a, a more dance or if you wanted to try this, but we're just going with this. Okay. Here we go. We're going to add in uh, the other ingredients here, the oil, the sugar. This bread is really hard to, you can't really mess it up. Third cup of sugar. Sue says it is the same. Yes. And I noticed that in the recipes. And then I'm going to add. Some people do the flour. I had all the, like, this is what the recipe that was packed down said to do was just add a little bit and then start adding the flour. So that's what I'm doing here. All right. Here we go. What about salt? You put salt in it? A half of a tablespoon. Did I put that in my white sugar in that? So we didn't measure out salt. I, I, I scared myself. Thank you, Mary Beth. Okay. Um, good catch. We need a half a tablespoon of salt. Real salt is recommended as well, and I, I've researched that. And, um, the real salt comes from Utah, and the pink salt comes from, but they say they're very similar. Does anyone else know anything between real salt and pink Himalayan? Okay. Here we go. So we want to just mix it until it starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl. Sorry, you're hearing me breathing. <laughs> we know you're not used to I'm not used to it. I'm oh. alive. Oh. Pull your mic down just a little bit toward your chin. There. Not that better? That's well, better. You won't hear me. So for the, I have two loaf pans here, um, and at Jenny's I use glass as well. Janet and Alec. I don't know if you can. 
I say, oh, we're going to have a group and we're going to video. <laughs> okay. I guess the Father's was, calling me to it. I'll do it. He'll bring me through there it. Was, there were so many yeah. people that couldn't be here today and are very excited they get to watch yes. the video. Okay, so it is starting to pull away. Uh, keep going here a little bit. And you people on YouTube, you can go viral. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, uh, who knows what he has in store with this. It's always an adventure, right? An adventure with the Father. I have not. Sue Beck, I, I was, if I was going to be doing this for a lot of people, I mean like once a week for, for us, um, I would definitely want one, but I've been enjoying the process of doing it by hand right now. Okay, so it is starting to pull away. I'm going to do in less amounts now because I don't want it to. It is still sticky. The thing is, is that this dough, when you're kneading it, it is still. If you leave it a little bit sticky, um, after it rises the first time, it's just beautiful. Uh, but when I was trying to get that the first go around, it would come out too dry. And they say it's because this takes time to absorb the water. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit for just a few minutes here before I actually put it on the counter. Janet cleaned the counter for me um, before I, I need it. <coughs> Look at my notes here. While this is doing this, I'm going to go off on a little, um, it's 10.58, so I'm going to, for five minutes, um, I was looking up scriptures to share and the thought about the mustard seed came to mind, and I thought, oh, that doesn't pertain to what we're doing today. Well, then it popped up right in front of me on my phone, and I wasn't even searching for it. Um, I was doing scripture searches, but I wasn't searching specifically for that one. I thought, okay, maybe he is wanting, maybe somebody needs to hear this. So we'll talk a little bit about the mustard seed while this is, while I let it sit for just a few minutes. So, you know the verse that says, faith, the size of a mustard seed? Well, some versions say, several, I actually wrote down a list of the versions, and I, I stopped, because um, there were several, that say, faith as a grain of mustard. Faith, not size, but faith as a grain of mustard. So, it was, <laughs> it was revealed to me uh, in recent months that a mustard seed is one of the only seeds, if not the only, that cannot be hybridized. It can't be. Scientists have tried to, and they can't. So what does that speak to? To me it says genuine faith. That was a mustard seed. Genuine faith. That's the thought that I had. So then when you look at scriptures, There's a scripture in Matthew, and um, Matthew 17:20 is the one thing as a grain of mustard seed. I don't know what that Then let's go to 1 Timothy 1:5. In 2 Corinthians 13, 5, if anyone can get there and wants to read Matthew, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy 1, 5, and 2 Corinthians 13, 5, in, one, in, in 1 Timothy. I have 1 Timothy 1, 5. What does it say? But the goal of our instruction is love, which springs from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Sincere faith. My version says genuine faith. Genuine. genuine faith. So when we think of faith and childlike faith and genuine faith, and we think of it as a, in terms of mustard seed, 
It can't be hybridized. It's genuine thing. I think of my niece, Amari. She was healed. I've seen God heal in different ways. Um, she was born with her, her stomach did not connect to her esophagus. And she had surgery after surgery after surgery. And she's six years old, living on a feeding tube. And she would watch people eat around her and be want to eat. So she would sneak food. And she would bark like a seal. And they would go every three months and have her lungs pumped out in Cincinnati. And we were praying and praying for this little girl. And um, she had what's called botters. And so finally, after trying all these surgeries, they decided, OK, we, we have to break her chest bone. We cannot um, do this. We can't try these surgeries that we've been, they're not going, they're not working. So she would aspirate, and food would go into her lungs. And so she was headed to St. Louis one, one week. And they went to church Sunday morning before going to St. Louis. And the pastor had a wisdom in the being led by the Spirit paused and had the children come out of children's church to pray for Amari's surgery. They pray for her surgery. We say the kids miss the memo and they just ask God to fix her throat. Because she left and they went to grab lunch and she snuck some food. And she didn't have a rich, she did it. She swallowed it. She was able to eat it. So they go on to St. Louis and they're sending us videos. They're doing all these tests and all these preps for Friday surgery. Somebody had spoken to my niece that Sunday and said, I don't know what this means, but God is saying you're going to have to stand your ground with the doctors. And I do not know what that means, but He wants me to tell you this. So they get there. They're sending us videos. She's eating broccoli. She's eating mashed potatoes. Hallelujah. God healed her. Come Friday, they said, they're showing the doctor, she's eating, she's been eating all week. We don't need the surgery, we're ready to go home. And they said, they didn't understand it. They said, we need to, we need to um, open her chest bone. We need to see what's going on. And they said, no, if you had just worked on her and she was eating, you would say, you, you fixed her. The great physician has healed our daughter. We're going home. She's 16 now wow. and healed. Great and so, but I think of that childlike faith because Amari would say, five and six years old, Mama, she would tell my sister, Mama, when God, she didn't say if, when God heals my throat, I'll be able to eat cherries. When God heals my throat, I'll be able to eat that. Mama, I'll be able to eat ice cream. I'll be able to eat strawberries. And she can eat all those things and more. But I think of the genuine faith, the faith and the childlike faith. And I just thought that since we're talking about grains and, and um, seeds, I just thought that was so beautiful. Um, that that cannot, that seed cannot be hybridized. It just says a lot. Of, there's a spiritual lesson there in the faith. Okay, so now, I think it's been about five minutes. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit more flour here and try and get it out on the counter to knead it. Some people knead in the bowl. Um, Mary Beth and Cassini, how do you do it? Like <laughs> <laughs> Throw it on the counter? Yeah. All right. The first time I ever did it, though, Susan taught me how to do it. Uh, she came, we got a whole bunch of people, and she checked on everybody's love and bread, and she came to mine, and she said, just throw it in the trash. Throw it in the trash? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's been a process of learning that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> it was no helpful. I had to throw one in the trash <laughs> this week for the first time. But it was because I I grabbed the soft white instead of the hard white. It's for it's it's the softer. It's for the maybe I could have kept going with it and I didn't have the time. Well, if I had the time to research and be like, what can I make with this biscuits or something? Um, that's the only time that's happened, and so I've got them all labeled. That's why you probably saw me double checking the label. Um, but it's more for like cookies and biscuits and things like that. But it just wasn't turning out oh, right now. But it, it has a different, um, yeah. OK. Anyone want to need bread? Anybody feel like you're supposed to need bread? <laughs> I just know that some of you have probably done this way more than me. 
But I have found, if I, I just, it doesn't, I don't, if I think, oh, this isn't looking right, it, it always works out. And it's delicious. I've been doing sourdough, but it's only like a very small need. I'm looking forward to learning about sourdough and starting that as well. I've been doing it. I understand that's even easier to digest when, when you do yes. sourdough. But I'd like to use the flour to convert my sourdough starter. Mm -hmm. Anybody have the? I love the scrapers. But I really haven't had to waste much of that hands up putting it to use in that. Or if I had, like, if I was making something else the next day, I might use it. Maybe you want to use it within the, the three days for sure. Can you make pancakes with it? Yes. Um, French toast is wonderful. I love just a piece of it with butter and cinnamon. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, 
Heather, for real, like this, like this soon? You want me to do this? Like already? Jenny says it's time. But if there is, he's really wanting us. I think to pay attention. I think because it is so. It's about setting captives free uh, in our health. I believe the enemy has tried to rob us of our health because we can't get out there and do what we're called to do when we don't feel good, when our body hurts, when we're tired, fatigue. That's what bread would traditionally do. The way I've known it is make me tired and want to go take a nap and you eat this. And my husband's like, the first day, he's like, I didn't get hungry until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. It makes sense that it's a sustainable... So if you watch any videos or you've been around any bread makers, you know, there's the window pane test. And I'm still, it's my understanding with this, you don't get it quite as, um, uh, it doesn't do as good a job in getting it as smooth the first time. But when you see how this is, um, when we, after we let it rise this first time, So, does anybody, you guys know what the window pane test is for that? Really? Okay, so when you're kneading it, you pull off a piece, you roll it in the ball, which is still the best piece. And you do this, you should get to where you it can pull apart and you can see light through it without it tearing. And mine is still. It's got a little bit to go, but we're getting there. Unless you threw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> the window. <laughs> if the window breaks, it's got too much power. <laughs> too much water. <laughs> and they say, like, because this absorbs water at a different rate than just the white fluffy stuff that we've known, that if, when you get to this point and you don't want to keep the adding flour because you don't want it to get dry, you can just wet your fingertips. But I forgot to set out a little. Thing, but um, but give yourself grace with this. Like even the first loaf that was uh, more dense and heavy, it was still delicious. The thought of hearing those testimonies of health transformation that people were having with their kiddos, and one of the kiddos wouldn't even eat the bread, but only eat the cookies made with the flour, and still the warts fell off. My daughter has a testimony. I'm not sure if she's ready for me to share it, but I'm like, I think the irony has something to do with, with that. Much okay. easier. Okay. Some healing would take their place in her too. All right. I didn't get. That. I'm going to go ahead and put it in an oil bowl. Um, I've used. Uh, Coconut oil in my pans, not today. I've used it before and the bread would still stick. So I used a spray olive oil. If anybody has any tips on. I've, I've read that rice, you can, you can make rice flour in this too. I've heard that it is, um, somebody shared that with me this week, that you can oil and then use rice flour and it'll help the bread not stick. What about just a parchment paper? I haven't tried that. That makes sense. <laughs> yes, my daughter actually does her kneading on parchment paper too, but I think it moves around on me. So, yeah. Okay. I just, I've been doing my sourdough inside my thing with parchment and I pull it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. Cool. I'll have to try that. I had lecithin oil. stone at home um, is what I but, but I had you in it um, sanitize the counter for me for this for today. I should have asked you Jenna if you want me to use it. Okay. Scanning what do you think? Alright. This is a I got this bowl from my father in law so it's one I always let it rise in because I know like what it looks like and where it needs to get to. 
So we're going to cover it and let it rise, and we can pause and um, answer questions. And uh, what time is it? Eleven. This will probably take about thirty minutes to rise, and then we will divide it up into the, the two loaves. Um, I'm going to cover it. I brought some tea towels, but I'm going to cover it. And put, I usually put mine in the oven with just the light on because it creates enough of a, it helps to speed up the, the rising process with just the light on. Is that good? Because you need to shake your head, yes, so we'll do that. Um, and then, yeah, any, any other thoughts, Jimmy, before we take a break? And no, but I, I wanted to share something that when you were talking earlier about all the nutrients in the uh, wheat germ, and um, you were talking about having bought all the supplements, it was very interesting. Six months ago, when I placed my supplement order, I had a lot of different supplements, I guess, and I was placing that order um, and restocking every day. I heard, it, I heard the Lord say something very interesting, and I didn't understand it. He said, this will be your last big supplement for Well, and I thought, why? Why? Is it the breakdown and we're not going to be able to get supplements or for what? But it clicked today mm -hmm. uh -huh. that when I start my bread baking mm -hmm. and we get back into the healthy bread and all the nutrients that it supplies to the body, I'm going to need all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Hallelujah. You reminded me, my daughter had, had shared. So she's been taking uh, the supplement for um, eight years. And she wanted to get off of it. And so she got onto something better. Because this if this particular one, there were some concerns that it could be depleting her nutrients. So she switched over to magnesium. And then uh, she started doing this. And she's like, Mom. I mean, that was a huge difference. I thought, you know what? He's preparing her that she won't need to depend on buying those supplements because he's shown magnesium is one of the things that is in this um, iron, B vitamins, magnesium, selenium. So when I met with this gentleman, I need to cover the bread. I'm gonna wash my hands. Um, but when I met with this um, gentleman years ago that told me about all that had been done and then said you need these whole food supplements to replace. And selenium was one of the big things that, because if you take synthetic selenium, it has, like you can get too much and it's not good for you. But from the whole food, you know, and so it does so much for the immune system. And I was thinking, you know, he's, he's showing us this to strengthen, when we get back to exchanging the counterfeit for the true, it's gonna strengthen immune system, strengthen muscles. Sue Becker noticed that um, the babies that she had before milling her own grain versus after she had five before, two after, the two after held up their heads better at birth, the day of birth. Their muscles are stronger. So it's about strengthening and preparing and so much more, he says, so much more, right? I think your body can kind of use what it needs in this form, whereas the supplements, I almost wonder, I could have experienced where, um, I had some blood tests come back with low um, white cells and low platelets, and so they started running all these tests, sending me to an oncologist, like very scary. And then uh, he said, he's, you know, come back and says, you can't see this is a time thing. I kept showing up that way. And he said, what, do you think these supplements? And I said, yeah, but they're all like organic whole food vitamins, and you know, there's no way that's going to be related. And it was literally like a multivitamin, maybe some turmeric. It wasn't it excessive even. He said, stop taking those for a month. And I said, okay, this is not, you know, this, there's no way this is going to be. So I certain, you know, he was going to come back with something. I'm going to have to go back, and I'm going to be going to something terrible. I stopped taking for a month, and sure enough, the next two tests went to normal. Wow. And so I'm really careful about, I don't, well, I don't take supplements anymore because I almost feel like it's this kind of self-medicating. Like we think we know, you know, that says on the jar, take this much, but your body might not need that much. And, you know, I just, I, yeah, I hear so. Wow. Like within this format, it's like your body can take what it needs and, you know, 
or something that says, he who sells grain will be blessed. And she was like, with confirmation on that very day where they had invested in grain, it was confirmation that she was on the right track. So she sells grain? She actually said, yes. Now, in, in our, we, there's quite a bit of shipping from her to get it to here. In, in the southern states, they have a co-op also where they can get it to people more affordably. But I looked on her website and Missouri's not in her co-op area, but you still can have it shipped. Um, but the shipping was very expensive and uh, because of the weight, it's very heavy. And so um, I found Azure and they come through once a month. So they have a lot more than grain. They have um, pretty much anything you would buy at the store or the health food store. And um, you can pick it up once a month. Is that Azure.com or what is that? I have a. It's, it's on the link. Yes, it's A Z U R E. A Z. Yep. You have it till the Wednesday order. The first, um, so they're they're the next drop in spring will be the first week of March. So you have until March first to order. You can the way it works is you can put your you can put things in your cart and actually. Start your order, place your order, and what it'll tell you then, it'll say your order has been placed, but you have until March 1st to change it. So if you want to go back and add things or take things out, you have until the date that it actually processes, which is March 1st, and that's when they charge you for it. And then you get an email that says your local drop is at this date around this time. And it's beautiful when people show up and get in line and kind of help unload the truck. And it's honored, it's on the honor system. Nobody has to present a receipt. Um, everybody helps everybody if they need help loading it into their car. The first time I went, I was by myself, um, and then a gentleman helped me load my, I didn't realize, yeah, I should have thought 50 pound would be kind of heavy to lift. <laughs> so I ordered in 25 pound um, increments now so that I can lift it myself if I need to, I mean, I, you know. Where do you meet them? So the, in Springfield, they come, the semi pulls in at the designated date and time, um, and it's near Mama Jean's parking lot. So you just drive past um, that road off of Sunshine. Like you're going to Mama Jean's, but you just keep going, and there's a parking lot. They give you the address. There's one in Ozark also, I believe. Somebody told me. I haven't been to that one. So how do we they have cheese, they have healthy you know, cheese, and how do you do what? So we go on the internet. I can, yes, they have a website and I can send you a link. If I have sent it in the Glory Girls, I'll send it again. Um, and it's a yeah. which is in Nebraska. And um, I get these buckets, which is not on all of our buckets. We have one coming. But there's no shipping charge. Oh. So they pay the shipping. Really? And the buckets are about $125. For one of those big buckets. For, okay. I don't know how many years it holds out of. 43 pounds. 43, okay. So Wait, for a bucket is 43 pounds? Yeah. So for a 25 pound bag of like the hard red, I think with Azure, I'd be $25 <laughs> for 25 pounds. I feel like for 50 at the one point it was. Yeah. So they're packing it for you. So they're, it's, yeah. the price is higher because you're yeah. getting the shipping and the, the packing. Yeah, but, it would be interesting. So it's about depending on which one you go with for 25 pound bag, it's like 25 to 35 dollars. And then I bought my food grade buckets at Menards. I found them cheaper than online at Menards. And the, the lids, you will want, you will not want to be wrestling with those lids. You'll want to get the lids that just what do they call? Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a name for them. Whatever freight has them too. Menards have yeah, there's different um, lows. I'm sure it goes this way. Um, but yeah, they just spin off real easy, and then I put a label, hard red, hard white, stop white, because I don't want to make the mistake. Um, Sue says she put a red lid on her red wheat, so she would know that's the red. Um, so yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited about um, what he's showing us, and the more that's to come. Um, and I, the bread is, the, the dough is rising. Do you, have any other questions at this time? Let's see here. 
What is the uh, brand name of the oil that you use in the green bottle? This one is Mina uh, Moroccan. Where do you get it? And it had a higher content of the polyphenols. There's a lot of health benefits in the again in, in the oil, but there's some counterfeit oils out there too. Um, Sue even shared that what they were using initially she was revealed to her wasn't the best olive oil because there's counterfeit oil out there too. It's not. Um, so where do you get that? This one. And it's ordered on Amazon. I know. I want to get away from it. I need to look at what Azure has. I just had plenty of this on hand, so I haven't bought the oil, but they do have olive oil at Azure as well. Um, they even have like plants. Did you ever see that? You can order plants. Plants, you can order. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how the price is. Some of the Everything I've seen so far is either good or less than what I've already been paying. Yeah. So they're a reasonable price. And okay, so we can talk a little bit about yeast. Um, there's active yeast and there's instant yeast. And it's my understanding that um, what I did the first step where I let it proof, because so I wanted to make sure that the yeast was alive, because I don't want to waste a bunch of ingredients to find out my yeast wasn't any good. So you let it, um, there's probably more reasons than that. But they say with instant yeast, you don't have to let it proof at first. You can just mix it right in with your ingredients. However, I still do it the same way because I want to see that it's alive and that it's bubbling and it's, I don't want to waste a bunch of grain and other ingredients to find out my yeast wasn't any good. And so um, you can use either or. I mean, they have, you can use packets of yeast. I've just been, um, I started out with that, but I switched over to just keeping this in my freezer and pulling it in and out when I, when I need it. Um, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. This is a little off the subject, but Problems. Sourdough. Have you ever made sourdough? I haven't yet. I, I told my husband I'm ready to start to, uh, with, with the fresh grains to make my own yeah. starter, but I haven't gone there just yet. Do you know if there's a recipe in this cookbook for, for the sourdough? I believe there is. That would be great. Yeah. Or even making it because when uh, the sourdough starters are usually made with that flour. Mm -hmm. So if we could make our own. Yes. That's what Tanya was just saying. She's I've done been making sourdough for the past, and she wants to start yeah. feeding her starter this. Yes. Kind of. So it yeah. takes you can you can take whoever starter you have and start feeding it whatever grains. If you want gluten free flour, you just take it, and it's about a two week process to convert your whole sourdough starter to different grains. So you just mm -hmm. feed it daily. And and since I'll be starting from scratch, I'll start with right. the fresh meal. But that's good to know that you can transition it to the healthier whole, whole grain. With the mills, um, I, I mentioned I started with the harvest mill. Um, the reason I, I switched to the mock mill is the um, I get a finer flour with the mock mill than the, heart, the neutral mill harvest mill, um, which makes your bread lighter. Um, this loaf was made Thursday night. Um, I just set it out here today, but it is. Um, it looks very light. This one, yeah, with because we did use the um, that star ingredient that is good for the brain, the building block for the brain, the sunflower lesson. So there's soy lecithin. Some recipes will call for soy, but I've I've read too much over the years about health effects of soy. So switch. Um, this is the alternative, a healthier alternative, um, using sunflower less than which has a lot of health benefits. Do you ever have a problem uh, getting your, your dough rice? I've had problems with that over the years. They say it has a lot to do with, like, just the flour. I can't tell you exactly how much flour to use because it'll vary based on the, the temperature of your kitchen or the humidity in your kitchen. Or um, they say even the, yeah, just the environment. So even in my own kitchen, it can, the amount of flour can be different from one day to the next. So that's why, I, yes, it's good to read the dough rather than reading the recipe when it comes to the amount of flour. Like you'll kind of have, I know that 
this for two loaves, it's about four and a half to five cups, but we can't tell you exactly based on so if you just want to get it, I should have shown you when I pull it out, if you want it to bounce back, like when you touch it, you want it to bounce back. I started learning um, five years ago when I was, um, I, I think of Psalms 107, because it, it reads Psalms 107, it says, this happened, they cried out, he delivered them, this happened, they cried out, and it's like over and over again. And I think of that, my journey was um, five years ago, 2018, so my body was not absorbing nutrients, I wasn't sleeping, I was wearing a heart monitor when I met Mary Beth. This was kind of my, where I was at. Um, Mary Beth was in my old neighborhood, and um, 
who met, I think, thank God, I was praying for a spiritual mentor. And I say, God sent me an army. <laughs> and, you know, Jenny and, and Mary Beth and their circles of friends. Um, but I, at that time, I, I was like, I eat better than anybody I know, because I was, 10 years ago, he showed me that when I lost my mom to breast cancer, and I was reading books and labels, and it's like, Joy, there's more. So I was sitting in the ER parking lot, second time, the doctors, I've been to this doctor, this natural doctor, and this medical doctor, and I was searching, and I was looking to man, um, because I was so sick, and I reached a point where I'm like, okay, you're the great physician. I, I was Googling everything, trying to figure it out, and I was I just was like, you know, you know what's wrong with my body, you know what I need, and I heard, trust me. Oh, so I didn't go into the ER the second time, I went back home, and um, I ended up at my sister's house at one point, and I was lying on the bed in a room called Grace Elsie, it's the bed and breakfast with me in the room. But this book ended up beside me, and it was from Dr. Henry Wright in, in Georgia. Yeah. And um, we've been there. <laughs> have you? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. I still want to make it there for the For My Life retreat. But I started reading the scriptures of what God says about health, and He started opening my eyes to what He says about health and how transgressing um, God's ways, whether it be through unforgiveness, bitterness, um, anger, jealousy, any of those things, makes the body, he's showing me how that also, it's not just food, food is, is, he's showing us a lot, he's bringing us back to talk about food, but also the spiritual part of that, and I saw people delivered of food allergies, and and so, I yes, I, I don't think that um, we should be consuming a lot of the bread the way it's, the counterfeit bread, the way, what's been done to it. But I also think if you go to someone's home and they've made you a meal, you should be able to eat it and then not harm you. And so he just started showing me in layers and layers and started restoring my health as I started coming back into alignment with his whole his whole truth. Um, I had been been a believer since a young, very young age, and been baptized and knew a lot of Bible verses that were hidden in my heart but I hadn't been taught how to walk out my salvation with fear and trembling and repentance and how to break generational things. And when he taught me that day, it was May 18th, 2018, about some of the generational things and those things broke, were broken off. He used somebody to call me and, and to ask questions, being led by the Spirit, and we prayed and we broke that off. The Word, the Scriptures came alive to me that day. freedom and, and healing. And so it's it's physical and spiritual mm -hmm. and our healing, I think there's a lot of believers that are well Dr. Henry asked, he asked he asked God, he said, I'm gonna go out and teach this and he had a pre med background and he said, I'm gonna go teach your word. You got a hold of my heart. But you you say you heal all diseases and the church is only five percent of the church is being healed. You don't lie. Your word is sure. So what are we missing? And God started showing him verses like, a merry heart is like medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. And he started asking people, who do you need to forgive? Who do you need to forgive? And so there was some unforgiveness and some bitterness and some of that. Was, if we struggle with things, it's likely because our parents and our grandparents and their parents did. And he started showing these things. He used Jenny. And he used uh, Mary Beth to pray. He used women at Mary Beth to share testimonies to give me hope to keep leaning in to him. And he's so faithful. Um, I can't say that enough, just how faithful his word is. But I, I had to get back to walking in truth and putting my faith into action. And those, the, the healing the healing just started to, to happen. I, but one of the key points for me when I went to hear in Tulsa to hear um, some, from Dr. Henry's ministry, to hear them teach, um, I thought it was going to be when they laid hands at the end of the, you know, the day two, they had that on the agenda. And I was expecting that to move, but as I sat right there in my seat and I saw the scriptures about what he says about health, he says, I desire that um, you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers, and I heal all, all diseases and forgive of all iniquities. In the same verse, there's a connection there <laughs> to diseases and iniquities. And he showed me uh, Deuteronomy 28. You have a choice. 
I give you life or death this day. You choose life or death. You choose life and you follow my ways and these things, these blessings and this health. And if you don't, these things, these diseases, and if you look at the diseases, it's the diseases we're dealing with today. Depression, inflammation, blindness. Um, and then it goes on to say, and those diseases not even listed here. So there is a connection and we have a choice. And as I started learning to um, speak life, but it started when I sat in that seat, you know, in my seat that day, and I learned about life and death and the tongue. And I said, Father, forgive me for things I've spoken over, my, over myself that don't align with what you say about me and replace those with words of life. And I was able to sleep that night on my side. I hadn't been, to, been able to in months. My clothes were literally, I was wearing my tiny little sister's clothes and they were falling off of me. My body started absorbing nutrients that very weekend, and it was breakthrough. I was able to sleep. I hadn't slept. I'm very bad for remembers that time when my heart was just racing, and I couldn't sleep. My body was caught in fight or flight. But it went back to, we have a choice. What are we, what are we speaking? Why are we speaking life? Are we speaking death? Are we aligning with the fruit of the Spirit? Or are we aligning with the fruit of the enemy? Anger, bitterness, and forgiveness. And I know there's a lot going on. There's a lot of, I would meet a lot of people that were still um, believers, but they were in that, you know, that anger and bitterness. And I believe that is a bait that keeps us sick. And so I was delivered. When I started, when I had a desire to learn about the Father's Feast, and I showed up that fall to learn about the Feast of Tabernacles. I was delivered of a spirit of infirmity. And that was also in 2018. And so I think, again, we have we have our man-made traditions, which are fun, but when we learn and we pay attention to his, there's blessing, there's healing. I remember, I think it was 2018 or 2019, when Jenny said, and I had, I had, been, had been starting to show me, I just put a desire, Mary Beth has had a desire to teach Passover for how many years? 30 years? She loves she loves um, celebrating Passover. And I remember Jenny sitting in Mary Beth's living room saying, I think God is saying, pay attention to my feast. And I think that's another example of the genuine versus the counterfeit. And there's just so much more. As he, as he opens eyes, and he says he's going to open, open eyes, because he has eyes to see and ears to hear. And I just think we've been missing out on some of his blessings in our health here and now by not putting a better um, filter uh, or check on what comes out of our mouth. Like, we want to be more like Joshua and Caleb than, you know, the 12 spies and the 10 who talked about all the evidence in the world that's going on. They saw the giants. They, they had the fear. Fear. He showed me that the very same weekend. I never thought of fear as a sin. Scripture says anything out of faith is sin. And I was like, Father, forgive me for operating in fear. I think that it was that along with the word curses, and there was breakthrough healing in my body. And so I'm just excited that he's exposing more, more truth, um, where we can exchange those lies of the enemy for his truth. I'm going to check on the bread. Um, anyone know, I, at home I have been given um, from a family member this abundance, like a saran wrap from Spain. So I've been covering my bread with it when I... But I had learned that you can, you, you know, you see people do it all the time, and they didn't use that. They just used tea towels. But it says a damp tea towel. So, Cassini, is it supposed to be, or Mary Matt, is it supposed to be like. I just use a regular It doesn't have to be damp. I didn't know you had a damp, but I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how, how wet to make it, so I just put a tea towel on it. I'm going to tea towel was wet. Was it strapped to her? It was always wet. And she popped it over the bread. There you go. The raw sugar 
I had, um, I think I bought it at Aldi or um, oh, that's okay. That's what I, I've used both honey and that. Um, Sue says you can also use Supinet, which I haven't really researched or looked into that. Um, but I've just been using it. Yeah, but I do want to find um, my sister. They just relocated to Oklahoma, but they, they in Texas, they have the best honey. And I know it's best to get it in the area that you live. So I'm looking for a source of good fresh honey. But this is just raw sugar. On Saturday was at the mall, uh, the Amish are there, and they have big honey, and it's from this area. Oh, okay. At the farmer's market? Uh-huh. At the mall? Good to know. Do you buy your uh, yeast in bulk? I did get it in a, a few pounds, so I it filled almost two mason jars, the size that I bought from Azure this last time. And, and I put them both in the freezer. You can keep it in the refrigerator or the freezer. Um, and then just I spoon out what I need and put it right back in the freezer normally. So, so after you grind it, you can't put it in the freezer then? You can. You can refrigerate. It's my understanding that when you grind it fresh, you could extend the nutrients like closer to a week if you refrigerate it or a month or so in the freezer. But if you have this on your countertop, you just do it right when you need it. And it can grind other things, just not oily. The, the stone mills, you just don't want to put like flax seeds, any oily seeds in there. But you can, I'm going to use it to, for the beans to make Ezekiel bread. <coughs> and just make flour with it. And corn. No, you can do corn. You can't do popcorn. And you'll have, you want to read on each mill, it's a little bit different. Um, but you can make, they say, the best corn bread. I haven't tried that. That'll probably be on my next order. Getting the whole corn, right? Dry corn. Right in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say not to do popcorn or something. Like that. Yeah. And the manual um, mills usually like attach some of them attached to the countertop. When my daughter has, um, she'll probably upgrade to an electric one. So she's excited, and I mean, literally, you burn the calories before you eat the bread. It's a workout. Which Jenny and Alec know about that because they have a manual one. Don't you? So I had these, funny story, I had these wheat berries since July, and I bought them just thinking, oh, if you're ever is a time where you can't get flour, I would need to make my husband bread, I don't know what I would eat, try to maybe eat, I don't know, because I was still thinking of gluten bad, <laughs> bad gluten. So I've had these since July, and it's only five pound bag, I did it until six or seven weeks ago. Um, and it's interesting to me, I was on a Bible study sitting in Revelation with the person that shared the video with me. And we were in Revelation, transitioning from Revelation 12 to 13, and we were talking about counterfeit versus genuine and the examples in Revelation. <clears throat> and this video, this gal said, hey, you guys still watch this? She said, I, I didn't look at it for months after someone shared it with me because I don't like bread, I don't eat bread, I don't bake bread, why would I need to watch that video? She watched the video of Sue Becker, and she ordered her grain on. She, she was eating bread on this. We were on Zoom, and she's eating. She's like, "Who knew you could eat four pieces of bread a day and lose weight?" <laughs> she's like, "This is so, I'm like, so unreal. It's unlike anything." Now, for me, if I would eat bread, I would always go up on the scale because it's, it would create an inflammation, inflammatory response in my body. This is not done at once. I've been eating it daily, and I have not gained a pound. Now, I haven't lost, but I have gained. And I tell you, if I was eating other pastries that you get at the store or make with traditional flour as we've known it, and I was eating it every day, I would, I would be puffy and have gained, I'm sure, uh, yeah. It, so I've eaten very little bread over the last decade um, because of, but I, my body, I knew that it was counterfeit. I knew it wasn't good. I knew man had modified it, but I didn't know how to get back to the way he intended it. So, all right, let's see how we're doing here. And if somebody had asked me if I would teach you people how to make bread, um, two months ago, I would say you're crazy. Crazy. Are you so I don't eat bread. Are you so excited? <laughs> <laughs> I'm <actually> really excited. <laughs> Can I say something to you? Yes. You need to do this more often. You have got a 
testimony and a word from God to share. And you need to start using that gift that God has given you through this. Amen. I see that. Sarah walked in here, my friend Sarah came with me today, and she looked over here and she said, there's a book on the bookshelf, and it says, Joy, Joy of Cooking, and it's the author's last name is Becker. <laughs> Sue Becker is who introduced this joy to the <laughs> And I will say, okay, so it's not quite where it would be maybe in my kitchen, um, but I know that temperatures are a little bit different. And I think the more, there's something to this, the more you bake bread in, in, your, in your environment, it changes the, even uh, the yeast, they say, in the air, and it makes it rise and burn. Uh, but we're almost, I think, is that a double? Oh, you can see it again like you saw it. You did see it, I held it up. It looks good. It looks good. I want you to see if I can see any testimony before we um, break today. Um, our healing testimony. Okay. Um, so we're going to, I guess we can go ahead and, because we're going to get it into the two pans and let it rise a little more before we, we'll start to preheat the oven here soon. Um, I'm just going to wash my hands again. I'm kind of, uh, I guess you said grandma in the kitchen used that hand towel over and over and it's probably fine, but... And along with that, I want to tell you, the spirit of infirmity means weakness. And so whenever you have the spirit of infirmity, it doesn't always mean that it's a sickness on you, but it's it's putting a weakness in you through some... Really? And so through our foods, and the things that the government has been putting in our foods, it's causing a weakness. And of course, that's exactly what the devil wants to do, is to keep the people weak. That's right. Yes, just like in the, the back, in the, you were talking about the peasants, that was, that was the spirit that was to keep them weak. That was the spirit in, in Egypt, was to keep them weak, so that they would not outgrow them. And so that's when the authority then will step in, is when the weakness is depleted and the authority steps up. So, just kind of say, oh, Yeah, I've been asking them to show me work, because throughout my journey I understood, like, when certain things would enter, but I'd ask them, like, what causes the spirit of infirmity to enter? And then that, it was a year or so later that he showed me the first, a root of bitterness, a file of many, and I think. Bitterness or generational bitterness can allow that to enter in. I had that verse spoke to me. Uh, but I hadn't thought about the, the way you just shared that with the weakness. And it makes sense. I've mean, been trying to modify our food. Not just bread, vegetables. Like Sarah and I have been teaching people for 15 years about, um, or close to it, about the, the dirty dozen and the clean 15. <laughs> The dirty dozen vegetables that are the highest pesticide rate right? versus the clean protein, you know. So it's not just the bread. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this back on the counter and we're going to divide it into two loaves. And it just feels so much better after the uh, that first fry. Scrapers are wonderful. Okay. 
So let's, I'm going to try that little window pane test again. This is still really new to me, but. So as you like try to make it like into a square or and just like, I'll stretch it, and you see how it's, it's holding together, it's not like tearing as easily now. But fresh mill flour will not get as it won't have as good of a window pane cut. I see how you can stretch it without. So I think we're good there. I'm gonna slice it in half for two loaves. And like a lot of times at home, I'll make half of this into dinner rolls and one loaf for bread. I was going to ask uh, some of you who had needed bread. Um, as far as the shaping, I don't get too fancy with it. I just kind of put it in there. What would you do with bread? I just want a whole a bunch of those little tiny.
I ordered spelt, barley, all the ones that you need to make the Ezekiel bread. I have them at home. I don't order them in five pound, not 20 pound now, because I wanted to, to play with them, um, make some, some bread and some. But I hear the Ezekiel mix makes really good pancakes. I'm wondering if anybody knows, like when you buy at the store whole wheat bread, is it also stripped? Or, you know, you can buy whole grain breads at the store. Yeah, wonder... If you read the labels, there's usually a lot more ingredients than what we use today. Right. Um, some of the healthier versions may be like, I mean, she has some good quality flowers that she just showed us. My, my question is if, if they've been milled for more than three days. Right. Three. Look at her father. Like, three. Three days. We were supposed to be eating fresh, fresh, fresh. manna. <laughs> um, yes. But I, I've used the, the King Arthur and uh, Bob's Red Mill flowers for years because if I did do some baking and wanted to do it gluten free, that was our best go to that I knew of at the time. Yeah. So. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I, I've shared this with Mary Beth and some of the, the girls, but I don't. Um, my name is actually something, like if I share the Azure link, there's a referral code, and it, this is the reason why I'm telling you, I'm just, it made me think it will say Melissa Anderson, and I, my driver's license says Melissa Anderson. My, um, you know, debit card say Melissa Joelle Anderson. I've never been called by either one of those names in my life. And so I would hear testimonies of people say, well, Mary Beth has a beautiful testimony. When she was shot in the neck, Miracle that she's alive mm -hmm. at the shooting range, and she lost her voice. And she asked the father one day after months of not having a voice, right? He, the father, can I share this? Is it okay? He said, You haven't asked me to heal you, right? Yeah, I kept hearing him say, You haven't asked, you haven't asked me to heal you, not really. I kept hearing that. And so I'm wondering if this one said that. And I just asked him, Are you going to heal me? <laughs> and what did you hear? What did you hear? Yes. Yes. And within an hour, I saw voice back. Yes. And I remember you said. I remember you said he, you yeah. heard the you heard a voice say, "What are we going to do about our Meredith?" Oh, yeah. So he called you by name. Yes, Meredith. Yes. Called right? me by name. Yes. So I was like, "What is my name? What does my heavenly Father call me?" Because I've been called Joy on my life, but everything legal says Melissa. Melissa Joelle, and then they would say Joy. And not, now they won't put a hyphen, so it says Joel. <laughs> and I'm like, what, is, what does he call me? And I've been asking him. And I'd also, Donna Gates had said, when there was you know, trauma as a child, um, ask the father to show you where he was. Where was he with you through that? And so I'd ask, and I'd ask these questions. And one day I showed up at a friend's house, and she was grieving. He sent me. He knew that she was grieving. She had gotten some bad news in the night. And I just showed up spontaneous, you know. Felt like I was supposed to go, and she said, I knew you were coming. And I said, you did? She said, yeah. And the father told me, Joy's coming in the morning. It was physical and spiritual. I said, he called me Joy? <laughs> she said, yeah, he, he said Joy's coming. I knew he was talking about you too, and also Joy. I don't know how he showed it up, but it was like, I said, he called me Joy. <laughs> and she, she started listening, and she says, he says, that when you were little and there was a lot, mama was depressed, daddy was, um, they were going through divorce. Um, and I laid in the bed with her, she actually tried to take her life at one point. And uh, he says, he says, the father says, in the midst of that trauma, he caused your family members, your siblings, I was the youngest of five, to speak joy, 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 joy over you. It changed your name. Mm. It's my God-given name. So I was like, what does he call me? What am, who am I? Like, I, said, I heard you. That, I remember. That. I think that made me more conscious. Because you said you heard him say, what are we going to do about our Mary Beth? I was like, what does he call me? What is my name to him? And but it, So that answered two prayers or questions that I had. What does he call me? But also, where was he in the midst of all that trauma? And... He was causing joy, joy, joy. And so I said, even when you speak that, when you say joy, it's like it brings the frequency. Mm 
And so he was there speaking, causing them to speak joy. So and I heard somebody else just recently share, um, you know, just ask, when you went through a struggle, ask him to show you where he was in that. Because he never leaves us or forsakes it. And so um, I just, that, that thought popped in my mind that um, he's so faithful. That friend, she says, I'm going to get you a t shirt that says, He's so faithful. <laughs> because I can't. I just can't say it enough of his faithfulness and his goodness. And I want, we do have some time now. Would this be a good time for Cassini to share her testimony? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Russ, you want to swap that speaker to over? Uh-huh. Or Cassini, what you want to hear? And we can do a video again. They can hear so, it. while we were sitting around here at the table last Thursday talking about bread mm-hmm. and grain, and the scriptures and what he was showing us and so much more. Because he walks in with this just full of joy and share her testimony. And uh, I was there, yes. We got to hear it. Jen, is it okay if I share something? Because I believe that the Lord is building faith right now in our healing. I, about three or four months ago, uh, for almost 20 years, I have dealt with uh, my liver enzymes being extremely, extremely high. And they have done biopsies and have been watching. He said if they go any higher, we're going to have to look at liver transplant. I mean, it's, it, it has been this way too long. And so I went to the doctor about three or four months ago, and they again, you know, we're going to have to, I think we need to do another biopsy and all of this. And I'm looking at my list of things that they have on my record at the doctor's office. And we get in the car, and and before we went to the car, he said, I want you to go back down, do some blood blood work, and then leave. And so we got down there, and it had taken too long, and I was like, we've got places to go, I need to leave. And so I'll just come back tomorrow. And so we got in the car and we're driving along and the Spirit of God came on me. And I said, I've had enough of this. I got it. I am done with this diagnosis on my life and controlling my life. And I started in going through and rebuking and taking authority over it. And so the next morning I went back for my blood work. And the results came in that afternoon that my liver enzymes for the first time in 20 years were perfectly normal. (laughs) Perfectly normal. (laughs) Nothing wrong with my liver anymore. And I told him, I said, remove that from my record. I don't want that on there anymore. I want it taken off. And, And so that's where the Lord is taking us. And I have felt like this is what he's doing. He's through you and through the testimonies. He's building our faith in our in the healing that he has taken place because in our authority, we're gonna that that infirmity, that weakness is gonna start coming off of our life as we take authority over this because he's getting us ready for what's coming. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, mean, I totally agree. That's what God is doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, is it working? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just, um, in awe. His goodness and all that he's doing and all that he's showing and how he's preparing us, like I said, for what is to come. And I believe this is, this is a key that he's given us um, yes. today. So uh, we are, 
it's finishing rising while it's preheating. And then we will make the bread. And Jenny has lunch prepared. I think we're having chicken salad today. And um, we do have some, some rolls or we can slice the warm bread. There's nothing like warm bread. But I will share a tip on that. Um, there were some of my loaves when we first started doing this that had fruit great, and there were some that had a gummy center. Uh-huh, right. And I learned that it was, if you slice it when it's warm, you can get a gummy center. Uh-huh. So don't slice it if it's warm unless you're going to eat the whole thing, <laughs> which wouldn't be a problem today. Um, but So I learned that because I was like, what is different? It was still good. We still ate it, and I was like, there was something different. And it was because we were so excited. It would come out of the oven and we'd want to slice right into it within a few minutes mm-hmm. rather than letting it cool first. And so there's a little troubleshooting tip for you <laughs> to make a note of. So keep that from happening. So um, any other questions while we, while we wait? Is all of one the only kind of oil you can use? <laughs> I, I don't think so. Some recipes will call for butter or um, different. It's just what I have on hand. I have coconut oil and olive oil on hand all the time. Do you know something about that? No, I was just going to ask about the eggs as well. So the recipes call for eggs. Some of them, I have um, one or two beckers that I did, did call for eggs. This one does not. Um, so there's a lot of different varieties and recipes. Does the egg make it denser too? I don't really know. The first recipe that I tried is in her book um, for her basic dough recipe. I believe it had one egg. It does. It has one egg. And it was denser. And it, it, I was also using um, the hard bread, which it, it ha- it's very good. It has a, um, a nuttier flavor, which some people want it to be more like white flour. And so it depends on what you like, what your family likes. Um, one of Sue's favorites is half and half, so half red, half white. Um, today, what we did was all the hard white, which still has a it still has a whole grain taste to it. Um, and you can get I don't know whoever has the book um, or on her videos if you hear when she talks about this, um, I'll have to look and see if she meant liquid, because like I said, when I first put this in. The first few times there was a little bit of a grit, um, so that's why I was dissolving it in the water. But as I was mixing it today, I did notice one little clump. So if you, if anybody gets a bite of bread that has a little bit of grit to it, um, this would be why. The grain is not normally gritty. It's not going to hurt you. Could you put that in with your uh, grain while you're filling it? Would that make it I don't know. Is it really fine inside there? Um, powder. It is a powder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but they have. I was reading even last night on it. Some there's liquid. You can get it already in liquid, and that may be the way to go. Oh. And have to learn how much to use in the liquid form. Um, but uh, the the most recent few batches that I made by dissolving it in water first and letting it kind of sit while I'm preparing everything, it seemed to be fine. There wasn't any grit, but it. As I was mixing it earlier, I did see oh, yeah. a clump. But if you get that's nothing like a little grain and grit. Have you ever used any nuts? I haven't yet. Um, some people will throw oatmeal in or um, seeds. Um, there's all kinds of things. I mean, that I've so many possibilities. My bread is just covered in top of the bread. Oh, mm-hmm. just Jenny, is there anything else um, before we uh, while we bake the bread that you want to? Yeah, thank you. I can't think of anything unless the ladies want to just visit it for a little while while we get transition to get the lunch food stuff out. That sounds good to me. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. You brought me through it. Oh, yeah, I couldn't have done this. Any other way?